This is the On the Pony Express podcast. Part of the On3 network. Check out all the SMU coverage you need at ontheponyexpress.com. Now, now. here's your host, Billy Embody. Billy Embody. One, two, three. Let's go. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast, a breaking news edition as we react to SMU parting ways with Rob Lanier, the head basketball coach, after two seasons. But first, we are presented by our friends at Status Jet, statusjet.com. Make sure you head over there, use code PONYUPACC, or mention on the PonyExpress.com for a discount on a round trip flight with Status Jet. They can also help also help you buy or sell your plane or acquire a new one be sure to reach out to their team they bring that level of luxury and attention to detail that you'd expect from a private jet charter company they can get you from point a to point b safely big jet small jet helicopter whatever you need whatever it's business family friends fun trip day trip whatever status jet will help get you there and let me tell you david henry and his team they know how to take care of their clients. They have been doing it for a long time, have a great network. You can reach out to them at 866-479-9991. All right, SMU fans, I know a lot of people have been clamoring for a change to be made at the head of SMU basketball, and we're going to get that. And Rob Lanier has been let go by SMU after two seasons. He finishes 30 and 35 overall at SMU, 16 and 20 in AAC play. They lost six of their last seven games overall this season, and that was too much for him to overcome to get back for a third season and enter the ACC as the head coach of SMU men's basketball. Rick Hart released a statement confirming reports. Jeff Goodman was the first to report it, but we put it on the board just a couple, probably 15 minutes before that, that we expected a change. And sure enough, uh, confirmed the news. We want to thank Rob Lanier for and his staff for their positive contributions to SMU and our men's basketball program these past two seasons. They always operated with integrity and in the best interests of the university and our student athletes. We wish them and their families all the best in the future. The investments we have made in support of SMU basketball, combined with membership in the country's preeminent college basketball conference, the value of an SMU degree, our location in the heart of Dallas, Texas, our championship caliber facilities, the NIL opportunities available to our student athletes, and SMU's commitment to comprehensive excellence position us to compete alongside the nation's best programs. Our focus now turns to finding a new leader as we prepare for the next era of SMU athletics in the ACC. A national national search for a replacement will begin immediately. And that's exactly what you'd expect uh, from SMU with the news that they are parting ways with Rob Lanier. And so let's unpack this into three segments. And this isn't going to be a long podcast, but let's start with the decision. This is one that isn't taken lightly. SMU had a coach and just wrapped up his second season, got to 20 wins, made the NIT, showed growth. But at the end of the day, and this is why I quote tweeted a Jeff Goodman tweet, It said, you know, making a move after two seasons really was kind of basically the point of this. And if you paid a close attention to the program and the trajectory and the overall energy around the program and just everything going on, this wasn't a surprise. And it wasn't necessarily a surprise because even we were saying no decision made there. They were still evaluating things. And, you know, at one point. You know, we said, I think there's going to be a change, but not for sure. And SMU looked at this program and said, it's not up to par with where it needs to be to go to this league. And the trajectory of it is not somewhere where they wanted to take that risk of giving Rob Lanier a third year. And let me be very clear, Rob Lanier is an unbelievable person. He and his staff were great to us at On the Pony Express. They were welcoming. We were welcomed back to practices for the first time in a minute and really felt like we were welcomed. I'll add that. And, you know, they were doing the best they could 
with this program. And, and they were tasked with changing over a culture that was a very country club style culture to a culture of hard, real hard work and practice, defensive mindset, all of those things, rewarding hard work. And at the end of the day, they showed results in terms of improvement, but the overall health of the program probably wasn't where it needed to be. And that was the case probably before they lost the six of their last seven. It just wasn't, we knew it was, if you followed closely, we knew it was kind of a paper tiger. We knew they hadn't played well against good teams. We knew all their wins were against teams that were poor. And then down the stretch, they lose to a UTSA, they lose to a Temple, and and you're then sitting there saying, well, wow, there, there are big issues here. And so SMU makes this decision not lightly, and they don't make it to go cheap on a new coach. They don't make it to uh, just make a change and make a change. You make a decision like this because you want to compete at the highest level, like they said in the statement released by the school. And I think when SMU pulled the trigger finally, now we're seeing what this job could really be. And you see some of the names, and we'll talk about them in a minute, but you see some of the names that are early on associated with this job, and you're saying, wow, okay, those are some some names. And they aren't, they they are well-known names. They aren't, you know, they're not going to go snatch, you know, a national championship winning coach from somewhere else or you know, somebody who is is a, um, you know, top 10 head coach, but they have the potential to snatch somebody who could be an excellent coach at one of the programs in the ACC that could be built into a premier destination in the ACC. And there are coaches that see SMU as that type of a job. So after the AAC tournament, there were discussions, and I think – and remember, after the loss to Temple in the AAC tournament, I did my podcast. And I said, look, this administration and the people at the top of the leadership of this program overall from the school side of things need to get on the same page with what they want to accomplish and what they want to be as they go into the ACC. And with this decision, I think we can now say, check, there on the same page and we'll have to see the higher play out and obviously we'll grade it and you know make the early judgments you know will, will it be a wait and see higher will it be a big name higher all those things i think they're going to be able to make a splash if they want to but what you can't say anymore is well there's dysfunction because david miller and all the money he's donated and other people supporting this program they're going to be able to write a check for an entire new coaching staff that the school has the potential to push the chips in on as they go into the ACC. And I think over the weekend, they got aligned. And I think things were at the point where we didn't know if there was going to be a move made, but there was enough buzz around it where I felt like we're on red alert here. This is like... This this could very well happen with SMU in the past. It's just a matter of kicking the door down and seeing it happen. Sure enough, it did. So kudos to the administration. Kudos to the people that support this program for coming together and getting on the same page. Now, when you look to this job and what it can be, this is where you can see SMU maybe flex their muscles a little bit financially. They've They've shelled out money. Uh, to get to get rid of Rob Lanier and his staff. And that is not something that is necessarily easy to do uh, after you're, you know, giving up millions in TV revenue and you're stroking $200 million of, of you know, fundraisers and things like that. All those things can be relatively difficult to, to sometimes um, stomach in a sense. But what we're seeing is big names be linked to this job. And we'll talk about a couple of them uh, on here, but I do want to encourage you guys to check out on theponyexpress.com for just a dollar for your first month. We've got a hot board. And just being frank with you, we've been going behind the scenes and, and digging up names that would be of interest over the last week or so. 
because we've had this time to prepare. It was just a matter of will it get pushed over the the top, and it did. And I and I do think that regardless of what happened Wednesday night in the in the um, NIT, I I think they were going to make a change. And I I think a lot of people felt like it would be tough for SMU to overcome Indiana State. I mean, we saw the offensive firepower that they had, and then of course the game played out the way it did. But you know, there you, you can't ever bet on you know that teams can go on a run, teams can do this, but it, I I think there was there was already a decision made in in the key decision makers' minds. Um, I know Jeff Goodman uh, alluded to the fact that it was made above Rick Hart, which, look, I, if if you're asking me if if President Turner and Rick Hart like firing coaches after two years, no, they don't. Not many people do. The, you want to find reasons why it really isn't working out. And I think once they dove into the program and they had been and they all had discussions, they realized the right move needed to be made. And so I, I think that's kind of a cop out in the sense like no one in college athletics really wants to fire people unless it's so bad, like Kenny Payne at Louisville bad after two seasons, especially when you change the culture like they did. But now they did. They're all on the same page in the sense of let's go take this war chest of money and let's go find the right guy to lead SMU into the ACC and not only change the culture and bring the energy back, but make it a competitive team. So let's dive in, though, to some of the names early on that are being associated with this coaching search. A couple names that have been floated right off the bat. Eric Musselman at Arkansas is someone that has some ties to the university. His sister went to SMU. He's got a lot of family in Dallas at Arkansas. And this is something that is really interesting as the NIL era has unfolded. Arkansas is poor when it comes to NIL. They are a program that doesn't have the resources to compete. They have one of the best atmospheres, in my opinion, in college basketball when it's rocking. But right now, they don't have the money to compete. And so when you don't have the resources to compete, that's a really difficult uh, situation for any coach, but in particular when you're in the SEC. So Eric Musselman's won a lot of places and won a lot of basketball games. And we'll see uh, what happens um, with him and, and if SMU goes in on him. But he's been around the block a while. Uh, he's got a, a 70.4 career winning percentage in nine years as a head coach um, and, and has been at Nevada and Arkansas. And this past year at Arkansas was not good, but they've won 20 games or more four of his five seasons, including three NCAA tournament appearances. He won big at Nevada. He's a proven big head coach with the right resources at SMU. Maybe, maybe uh, that could be somebody to watch there. I know he was mentioned. Another name that uh, you've got to continue on uh, with, with um, tying to SMU, and that's Will Wade. Uh, he is a winner flat out, and he's obviously gone through his issues in the past with the NCAA. But at the end of the day, he's won a regular season tournament, at least, or excuse me, a regular season championship at every single head coaching stop he's had. And he's done it on various levels. He's uh, recruited incredibly talented players that were five stars and elite level prospects. And he's recruited some diamonds in the rough that have turned out to be heck of you know basketball players for him. And he's got energy. He's a recruiter. He's tireless. He has done it with a defensive team. He's done it with offensive teams, but for the most part, noted for his offensive acumen. And I think he's somebody that sitting there at McNeese State would make a lot of sense. And by, by the way, he's got ties to the ACC. He's a Clemson grad. So Will Wade to SMU is one that has a lot of buzz early on, but we'll just have to see kind of how that plays out. I do think David Miller – He's going big game hunting. This is this is a job, and I, I've mentioned this in the past. When Rob Lanier was hired, it was a very different job. Don't get me wrong. But it's also a situation where David Miller was working on SMU to the Pac-12 and SMU to the ACC. He couldn't necessarily say, you know what, let me just stick, stick in here and let me draw the line in the sand, and I'm going to really try to get my guy. I think now that they are all aligned, I think the expectation is for that next coach to be a big name, to be a proven winner. I think there are some names that make sense at different points of time for SMU, like KT Turner. A lot of people love him. I think if this job came open two years from now and he was still having success at UTSA, 
or UTA, maybe they they look at him. But I, I think there's a little bit more seasoning desired in this coaching uh, job, um, and and so we'll be we'll be kind of that's something to keep in mind. It doesn't mean they can't come up with an up and comer if they deem that the right choice on their end. But I do think they're going to go a little um, more bigger name in a sense. Uh, from my early conversations that have been going on for for quite some time now. Um, Will Lutz from Western Kentucky was mentioned. He's had a ton of success already, and uh, he was a former SMU assistant as well. But um, I, again, think maybe just a little bit more seasoning. seasoning. He has had two impressive stints at at head coaching jobs, but um, we'll be keeping an eye on as well at um, um, – Oh gosh, I uh, just lost him. Buzz Williams at Texas A and M is might be a little pie in the sky, but that is just a, a name that has been loosely floated to me as well, and uh, a very interesting name uh, on that front. He's now gone to the uh, NCAA tournament in back to back seasons. Uh, they do play uh, Friday night, or excuse me, uh, yes, Friday night in the NCAA tournament against Nebraska. He did sign an extension. He's got a lot of money being thrown his way, but we'll be keeping a close eye on it um, in in that in that sense. Um, but there there's a lot of there's a lot of interest in this job. If you want more on some of the top names in this job hunt, head to OnThePonyExpress.com, and we will get you in the loop. It's going to be a fun coaching search to follow. Hopefully, for SMU fans, it doesn't drag out too long. Uh, and and as me as well as uh, I'd like to have this all buttoned up before baby boy comes along. But no, nonetheless, we've got to staff it on the Pony Express for a reason. And I wanted to get you guys quick thoughts on the firing. This is a job that has facilities with Crumb Center and Moody Coliseum. It has NIL. It has money to spend on a coaching staff. And at the end of the day, this program is really, really wanting to find a winner and somebody to energize this program and make an incredible first impression in the ACC. Doesn't mean winning it, doesn't mean coming in the top three, but being competitive in this league is something SMU is really desiring. And so we've got a coaching search. It's going to be a lot of fun to follow. There's a lot of names out there that are going to be thrown out there and, and talked about, but we'll do our best to keep you guys in the loop on some of these names. Um, and who knows, it could be somebody from – out of left field that maybe wants to make a change and and get a change of scenery. And so uh, just kind of like last time, Rob Lanier kind of came out of nowhere when he ultimately ended up being the hire. SMU is hoping that this one is going to be a little bit more of a splash when it comes to it. So that's the big piece. There's money to spend in a big, big way. They're writing a big check for Rob Lanier to go away and they want to make a uh, want to be writing another big check for a, a big name. So we'll be keeping an eye on it at ontheponyexpress.com. Again, quick reminder, guys, head to statusjet.com and check out what they can do for you in terms of a charter jet. And uh, we will be uh, excited to work with them on some things now that there's new energy around SMU basketball. Maybe we'll get some trips going with them as well for SMU fans to head out to some of these premier matchups in the ACC. So use code PONYUPACC when talking to them about SMU or about uh, some of your round trip flights for a discount. But till next time, guys, this has been the On the Pony Express podcast. We've got a coaching search on our hands. Subscribe for just a dollar, and you'll pretty much be guaranteed to be carried through all the way that co of that coaching search. So check out OnThePonyExpress.com. Hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to the On the Pony Express podcast with Billy Embody. Follow us on your socials on X at SMU on three and on Instagram at on three SMU. And keep it locked to OnThePonyExpress.com for more coverage.